Oh, we are gathered here today to say goodbye to a Redskin sellout streak that has been with us for 50 years. Attendance on Sunday was a little more than 57,000, 25,000 short of 82,000. The capacity listed in the old Redskins good book. Hell to the Redskins! Now we all know the product on the field changed and so did the demand for tickets to sit in the pews to watch it. But I was stuck in the overflow. So we say our final goodbye to the ticket waiting list, to the dedicated fans who waited over a decade to sit where they sold oxygen instead of popcorn. Now to be sitting at home eating stale popcorn. We also say goodbye to the time Dan Snyder said there was 200,000 fans waiting in the waiting list. Was that true? Nah, I don't think so. Here's what's on my mind tonight. January 1st, 2014, a black man was snatched out of his car, beaten up by the police because he simply asked, why was he pulled over? That black man was me. Did they do it because I was black? I don't know. I know both of the officers were white. After one officer asked what I did for a living, they dismissed every charge, even treated me differently. I know every police officer isn't bad, but I was lucky that night. That wasn't the case for Philando Castile, Eric Garner, and more. So when I see Colin Kaepernick as the face of Nike's Just Do It campaign, I see hope for people like me. I saw it all over our social media accounts, people using their free speech to criticize a company for using their free speech to defend someone's free speech. Yeah, it sounds crazy to me. When I see people burning their Nike shoes, it comes off like you support social injustice and what happened to me almost five years ago. Instead of burning your Nike apparel, Give them to the homeless veteran I saw in Gaithersburg, Maryland earlier today. Give them to the Salvation Army, our low income people. To just burn them because you don't like a company supporting someone who's trying to save lives like mine is dumb and a waste of money. Your money. Instead of burning shoes to protest protesting, how about burning candles to honor those who have been unjustly murdered? Because if we don't recognize what Colin Kaepernick is doing people, that is protesting social injustice, there will be another person talking about how they survive police brutality if they're lucky to survive it like me. That's what's on my mind. Which number will Adrian Peterson wear? He wore number 28 in high school, college, and for most of his NFL career, but y'all know he ain't getting number 28. Looks good on him, by the way, but that number belongs to two-time Super Bowl champion Daryl Green. No Redskins player has worn number 28 since Green retired. Now look at the Redskins website. It has Peterson's number as negative one. Yeah, we know that's not going to last. How about number 23? Here's a picture of Peterson rocking the number when he was with the Cardinals. Now here's a picture of Peterson today with Quentin Dunbar, the guy who currently wears number 23. Topper, what do you see here? What do I see, D? Well, this time of year we often see it. Yep, developing drama. I feel you, Topper. Unless Peterson convinced or paid Dunbar to switch, Peterson's not wearing number 23. You think Quentin Dunbar wants to go back to wearing whack number 47? <laughs> Heck no. I believe Peterson will wear number 26, and I had to go way back, back when we had hairlines we wish we had now. 1993, Little League football. There's Peterson rocking number 26. And guess what? Nobody currently wears number 26 on the Redskins roster. If I'm right, people, call me now for your free tarot reading. The Redskins are coming off a win, but there is a negative trend that's been haunting the team since the start of the 2016 season, people. Peep this. In the Redskins' last two games, they have a 1-1 one one record. In their last four games, 2-2 two two record. But let's add music to help describe this. Rolling the DJ, y'all. In the Skins' last six games, three wins, drop the beat. Cut it, cut it, cut it, cut it. But they've also lost three. Their last 10 games, five wins. Five losses. Last 12 games, six wins. Six losses. Last 14 games, seven wins. Seven losses. Last 20 games, 10 wins. 10 losses. Last 33, 16 wins. 16 losses and a tie. Last 37 games, 18 wins. 18 losses. Oh, yeah. Technically, a tie is not a loss. Sure isn't a win either. Michigan State, right? Maryland, Over Maryland. we are behind you. We've had a black and gold. There's nothing quite so glorious 
the T, our team victorious. We got the team, boys. We got the steam, boys. Keep fighting, don't give in. M-A-R-Y-L-A-N-D. Maryland will win. Booyah. Come on, put Terps up there, baby. Yeah, I might as well send Maryland all the way to the championship. Terps. Hitting that C-sharp. Hidden talent. I can play the bongos. Now, these are not bongos, but, like, can you, like. Give it to me, Tap. Go ahead, let me see. Yeah. Who taught you that? Oh, my dad. <laughs> see, we learned something new today. How much champagne have you been drinking so far, Max? My man. <laughs> well, a lot. <laughs> I, can't, I can't help myself. Colt McCoy is not going to be the same quarterback you saw against the Dallas Cowboys because now he's preparing. I know the way he works. He keeps his notes on grafting paper. Who takes notes on grafting paper? That's Colt <laughs> Absolutely McCoy. Absolutely nobody. So he's going to be prepared and ready for Philly. And last I checked, my man, uh, how's your secondary doing? Well, here's what no, I'll no, say. No, 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 no. Answer the question. Here's the thing. Here's how's the thing. Your sec- no. Backup how is quarterbacks your second- are backups for a reason. And how the are your secondary, backups? The secondary? secondary is in shambles. All right, let's move on to they the next They have a bunch of then. guys you've never That's heard of. In layman terms, they stink. If you could be any animal, what animal would you be? A lion. Why? Don't say king of the jungle. I'm the king of the jungle. I just watched The Lion King the other day. I'm Simba. Okay. Masafa got killed. You know, I'm not dying. I'm in that thing. You, you know you know your boy Dwayne Haskins said he's Simba. If you can be any animal, what, which it's animal easy. Would you be? Lion. Simba. Gotcha. Yeah. He thinks he's Simba. So tell me, who's the real Simba? <laughs> I told, I, him, know, I, I told him too, yesterday, I told him yesterday, I said, if you're Simba, I'm Mufasa. I told him that yesterday, and he knows this. AKA, I'm your daddy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir, you got to take over my throne. When you see the family and friends here on the ice, you see the DC fans, everybody's in the crowd. What does that mean that you're now going to bring a title back to DC? Uh, it's great. Um, can't wait to go home and celebrate, see my mom. Uh, kiss her. Uh, I'm going to call my dad right now and tell him we did it. Does this make you emotional a little bit? Yeah, of course. This is Shinadu. Hey, this is Darren. You ready for the Texas Redskins game? <laughs> you ready for that Texas size L? The only W you're going to get is the one in Washington. Man, tell me something good about Houston. We're the best tailgaters hands down. And we gonna be out there. Be out where? Man, have you checked the weather we've been getting lately? You know Texas shuts down in weather like this, man. I guess I'll make it even. Cause I heard your players say your fans don't even show up anyways. I'm gonna pray for you. Father God, I pray that after the Redskins take this loss, that they bounce back, Father. Pray for a Redskins loss? Man, we already had a Texans funeral. It's so hard to say goodbye to the Houston Texans, yeah. I'm pulling out from my homie. I'm Darren Haynes, and I got a surprise for you. Redskins training camp is almost underway, and we're going to visit one of the most popular Redskins players to see how they prepare for training camp. D, what's up? Vernon, what's up? How you doing, man? What you packing? What you packing for training camp, that is? Uh, take a button up, go with it, pair of jeans, nice pair of shoes, bada bing, bada boom. Pesco boy. My number one go-to snack. But you can take this home with you, put it right in your pocket, right there, bada bing, bada boom. This is good. Yo, D, check me out. Look at this bad boy right here. This is the gateway to success. Ah. And this is you in your hotel room. Hotel room, right in the room. Ah. There, there we go. go. When it comes to catching balls, you, know, you have to have proper eye, hand and eye coordination. And this is where I get my hand and eye coordination from. I've been doing this for years, D. It's passion, man. It's passion, dedication, and just uh, pretty much just being dedicated to your craft. It's like anything else. There's a difference between being good and being great. I'd rather play with 10 guys than to play with someone that's all about himself. I want winners. I told Vernon. You remember that rant? 
<laughs> Vernon, I want winners. <laughs> Sports director Darren Haynes has this News at 11 exclusive. Have you ever seen or experienced a coach verbally belittling a player? Yeah, that, I mean, that happens. Have you ever seen a player pass out during or after a workout? Yeah, we've had some tough workouts over the over the years. So I have seen some. I've seen some guys go down. You know, the, outside of what happened with yeah, out, the outside separate separate occasions where like you know we're working hard and it is a little too hot or whatever it is. I've seen someone just straight up fall down. Now that it's NCAA tournament time, work productivity around here is expected to decrease. 37.3 million people are expected to participate in March Madness office pools, according to Vault.com. One estimate says during March Madness, companies can lose up to $2.3 billion in lost productivity. No, actually it's $6.3 billion. That's my boss. It all adds up. Filling out brackets, discussing and betting on games with coworkers. Syracuse loss, you definitely owe me $50. And streaming games online. It's become a lot easier thanks to the invention of the boss button. Hey, boss is coming. With just one click, the button will immediately change your screen from basketball to what appears to be a PowerPoint page filled with charts. During the first two days of the tournament, approximately half of the 32 games are played during normal business hours. Workers on the West Coast can watch games as early as 9.15 a.m. So how are you gonna watch the NCAA tournament game? I know how I am. This year was different than previous years, Leslie, when it comes down to Alex Ovechkin. I mean, in previous years when they won the President's Trophy, what basically means they had the best record in the league. They didn't have that this year. So there were those doubters, and the guy like Alex Ovechkin who, who won the Hart Trophy, which is the MVP in the NHL, three times. So when you look at a guy who's an MVP, you need to have that Stanley Cup championship on your resume. And Alex Ovechkin finally has that on his resume. I mean, the monkey is finally off, his, off back. his back. A guy who, I mean, he's been the scoring champ in the NHL like seven seasons. When you put that in perspective, uh, in another sport, Will Chamberlain won the scoring title in the NBA seven times. Michael Jordan, I think he had like nine times. But you kind of put in perspective when you hear Will Chamberlain and Michael Jordan, those star players in the NBA, and then you have Alex Ovechkin who pretty much did that on the hockey side of things. It puts in perspective how good Alex Ovechkin is, and now he has that Stanley Cup title. He's a Hall of Famer. He's a Hall, now of, he's Famer. A Hall of Famer and a champion. <sighs> Dear Bryce, I was scrolling down my Instagram feed and it's Philly this and Philly that. I mean, I want to block you, but for some reason I just can't. I mean, I get it. You're over us, but that's not fair. We had a 10 year plan. You're supposed to win another MVP with us and win our first World Series together. You didn't even say bye when you picked Philly over us. Yeah, I saw that Instagram post last season where you thanked the fans. Yeah, some thanks that was. And don't think I didn't catch you slipping. You know, we want to bring a title back to DC. You know, we want to bring a title back to DC. You were thinking of us, weren't you? What could have been? I'm glad you're happy. No, I'm not. I want you to feel the same way I feel. Empty. And don't get me started on the baby. Shh, baby Bryce, shh. That was supposed to be our baby. Not the sonogram on a Phillies jacket, but our jacket, the one with the curly W. I have like five Nationals onesies saved in my Amazon cart. Who am I supposed to give these to? I won't believe it until you step on our field in their jersey. You have some nerve coming back to DC. I am over you. But Bryce, because of everything you did for DC, I still respect you. We're crashing everybody's tailgate party. Right. Uh, the you're the grill, Master Will? Will the grill, yeah. Mm, I think you need a little more spice in there, my man. Nah, I'm joking, nah. 
They missed out on the fish and shrimp. We never miss out on the on the fish and shrimp. Y'all got a secret stash in this tent. Let's go in this tent. See? Hey, I see the fish. On this round right here, we'll determine who wins this game today. Derek, Derek, Derek. Derek. Hey, brother, don't let me down. Right, don't let hey, 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 don't let the team down. Hey, Derek, man, Derek. Derek. No, no, no. Don't bro. hug me. No, no, no. no. You guys have anything good, anything I can taste to see if it's all right? No, we don't eat. We don't eat over here. We just drink. <laughs> well, I <laughs> won't go. <laughs> hey, shut the camera off. What route are we running? Oh, I'm just going deep. All right. Hit me deep, right? Jump. Go deep. I have no arm, though. I have no arm. I got a bad arm. Oh, really? shoot. Oh, you are trash. Hey, he got a jump, man. You are trash. Don't you know, he look like Lil John? Cow <laughs> look like Lil John Cowboys fan. Can I get a yeah? Yeah. <laughs> I'm Darren Haynes. Yeah, I know you. Can I cook some bacon for y'all real fast? Is this all right? I mean, this is easy. Oh, shoot. Oh, shoot. Oh, shoot. Oh. Never cook bacon on the grill. Oh, yeah, I never cook bacon on the grill. <laughs> Look at your bacon compared to his. I do not go. mean to burn the bacon. Damn, we gotta it's go. all right, man. Hey, we gotta go, hey, bro. Hey, we gotta go. hey, we gotta hey, go. hey, just, just break break the dark pieces off. I have I have one of the owners oh, making me I'm a plate. What do you put that on? You put it on everything. Drip, 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 drip. Yeah. Right, I just need some foil. So I can bring this home. That's a to-go plate. Oh, he's giving me a to-go tray. We're out of here, y'all. Do you want some gospel music? Don't you ever compromise? Who you are, don't you ever compromise what you may be. How to describe myself? Say a man of different talents, different jack of all trades. Pride myself on being able to adapt. So the biggest thing for me is, yes, you play football, but what legacy do you leave? From the moment we're born, the life we live adds up to who we are now. Dwayne Haskins has been playing football since he was eight years old, but has always been preparing for the game of life. Is this like the, the dad chair? It used to be the dad. Oh, it used to be the dad. You are, you are more than welcome to you sit in the massage dad? chair. If you want to get a quick massage, massage room, chair. you go ahead and you get you. My dad always told me that I had three aspects of my life, sports, social life, and school. I chose to be great at school and football. What did I always tell you guys about grades? Like I always used to say to them, you know, C is passing, but C is average. So, you know, you're not average, so I expect A's and B's. I remember being in middle school and being scared to get a C, so I'll go to the teacher and be like, is there any way I can do extra credit or something? <laughs> you know, they always, always told us to chase our dreams, and so they did a great job raising us. All right, I'm good to go now. Y'all ready? So what's life been like for you the last month and a half? Hectic, a lot of flight miles, uh, a lot of meetings. Trying to juggle everything at once. Do you are you looking forward to it kinda the the ending of it? Yeah, can't wait. I uh, went back to Ohio State and went to a couple of practices, went to the spring game and it just made me miss it more, miss me around the guys, miss playing. Alright, I think we're going to this park right here. Oh everything has come together. It's like the rites of passage. Everything's just matched up. We're at the draft. Okay. Lady! Wait, sit. Ah. All right, keep it rolling, me, Dad. <laughs> your son's called. Whatever NFL team it is, your son's name's called. How are you going to react? I might have to pinch myself. <laughs> really? I might have a moment. I might shed a tear. I just never thought he'll get to this point. I just wanted him to play football. 
I just wanted to see him play. It was never, ever, ever, ever about the NFL. It was never about going to college to be the number one quarterback. It was about the dream. It was all said and done, it's about a dream. Uh, just for me, the biggest thing is, um, you know, getting back to the kids, because when I was a kid and uh, 10 years old at Ohio State, I was looking up to Troy Smith, and now I'm a quarterback. The kids looking up to it over in Ohio, so uh, it's crazy to me. So I go back to my high school, and the kids in elementary school know who I am. That's so humbling to me. Uh, yesterday, I was with my sister, and we were walking around school. People were signing, and had little kids come up to talk to me and ask me to sign the backpack. I'm like, <laughs> you know, so it's, it's just cool. So, you know, my whole entire life was, was built upon being a great quarterback, great person, great great brother, great son. Everything I do, I want to be great at, and that's hard for people, but it's not for me. Of course, people have their own criticism and they have their own perspective, but they don't know who I am as a person, what drives me, what motivates me to get better. I know that in six years, I'll probably win one or two Super Bowls by then. And uh, You know, I just, I have a lot of goals, and I write them down, and my goals haven't failed me yet, so we'll see. Let's see, I'll break it. Bam. The receivers will be much better at the next level. I hope so. I'm playing. <laughs> Appreciate it, my man. Thank you. Appreciate it. What started off as a dream became a reality. Mame Bani made history, becoming the first black woman to qualify for a U.S. Olympic speed skating team. Mame was born in Ghana, at the age of only five years old, moved to live with her father in Wheaton, Maryland, and said goodbye to the only life she knew. Initially, she didn't want to stay here, but uh, after a couple of days, she just changed her mind and said, Daddy, I like it here. I want to stay here. Mame fell in love with the States and never left her dad. A year later, at Skate Quest in Reston, Virginia, they saw a sign that read, learn to skate. We started on a Saturday morning. She got on the ice. Oh my God. I was like, what did I get myself into? I was afraid she was <laughs> going to fall and break her head open. My figure skating coach, Coach Helen, was like, hey, Kwaku, your daughter is going a little too fast for figure skating. She should try speed skating. <laughs> Mame took the idea of speed skating and sped off with it literally, but she faced challenges. At one point in her skating, she was going like this, skating like this, both arms going this way. So she was reading off, and it took a while for her to grasp it. But when she got it, nobody could catch her. You're the first black woman to make an Olympic speed skating team. <laughs> How does that sound when I say that? It sounds unreal. Yeah, you laugh every time I say it. <laughs> Olympic team. <laughs> the best moment was when she crossed the line. She was pumping her fist so hard <laughs> and she slipped. You know, I got a picture of that. You know, that, that was the moment. What happened? I was like, holy cow, I'm on the team now. Let me just cheer some more. And then I guess my feet got crazy and, and, then, I, and then I fell. <laughs> the only thing that I could do was like cheer because it was such a happy moment for me. Speaking of cheering, who can forget that sign? Kick some hiney bind. <laughs> Daddy. <laughs> Where is that sign now? It's in Salt Lake City. Yeah. Like in the trash somewhere? No. Or? Oh, so it still exists. Yeah, Someone it's, it's has still, it. Yeah, it's still in her room. Will that go kick some hiney biney sign make it to the Olympics? Is that going? Is that going with you yeah, guys? Yeah, it is. We decided it is. Yeah. <laughs> when Mame and her father returned to rest in Virginia, they also returned to the place where the Olympic story began. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. You're, like a, you're like a superstar around here. <laughs> has it sunk in yet? Nope. <laughs> This, this is the beginning. This is what happened, and I, I don't know. <laughs> but that beginning happened right here. Yeah, that beginning literally happened in this ice. And since the beginning, Mame had to do it all while her mother stayed in Ghana. Sadness, because she's not here to see 
see what we both accomplished. I've like gotten over the fact that I don't have a mother here, but I, I also have a dad who's also a mother to me, so it's kind of, it's, it's okay. So when she won and qualified for the Olympics, she posted this message, but there was one part that stood out, and I, 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 want, I want to read it to you. When I'm older, I want to be just like you, having an amazing heart, being dedicated and being the best parent ever. I love you, Daddy. Wow. I like appreciate him so much because he has given up everything in order for me to be on the team and or at least like try out to be on the team and I I'm amazed by him. Now it's time for the Winter Olympics in South Korea. She looks to win gold for Team USA, but also for the original team, the team that sacrificed, had the dream, and started with a little girl from Ghana. I know it's gonna feel amazing and it's gonna be tears because we know how much we've sacrificed, more he sacrificed and yeah. it's gonna be awesome. <laughs>